EPS reports. We're here, baby. All three of us, live and in person. Justin, Brandon, Pat, what's up, boys? What's going on? Shabbat shalom. He said it. I asked <laughs> him to say it. Yeah, would. Yes. Shabbat shalom, Shabazz Muhammad. <laughs> Shabazz Muhammad. Okay, yes. great basketball player. Uh, <laughs> boys, we're going to be talking about the April 6th tournament at Smoke and Q. It was nine ball. Of course, 500 added as always, 32 players. As always, we fill this tournament up every time. It's a beautiful little room. Beautiful. Um, we paid out a total of $3,205. How awesome is that? That's great. Yeah. That's not, not a bad way to spend a weekend. Exactly. That's pretty good for a one-day tournament. Yes. We were done by, Pat, what time were we done by? Probably. Smoking Q, we were done yeah. by around like 2. Yeah. yeah. That's not a little, bad. A little bit before. Maybe like one forty-five. So it was a good time. Yeah, it was definitely before 2. So it was like one forty-five. Okay. It was like right on the edge. So that's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Uh, all three of us got to play. Yes. We'll, talk, we'll talk a little bit about Brandon's uh, experience, though, here later on. Um, but me and Pat even got to play each other. Nice. Yeah, so that, that was great. Fun. Yeah, which we will talk about as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, thank our sponsors, though, really quick here before we jump off here. You know, thank these guys that help us. They're the reason why we get to do the tournament, really. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, Deadstroke Media, who helps run the uh, stream. Pat, that's you. Y'all been doing some cool stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate like it. That. Some good appreciate matches. That. Definitely go check them out. Um, also, John Patera at Remax Metro Realty. He played in our tournament once again, got 13th place. We'll talk about him a little bit later on. Um, Inkwell Design, that's JC Riggs. She makes our awesome trophy and our awesome t-shirts that none of us are wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day at work. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, mine's in the dryer, right? <laughs> Through that wall. Um, Paul Harrison Custom Cues does great work. Um, Portico Licensed General Contractors, we definitely appreciate Corey, who's been playing in a lot of your matches. He's uh, uh, he's the number one guy right now. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, the Pool Doctors. Josh Mullenix, uh, he played in one of our last tournaments. Didn't make it this time, though, but we appreciate him. Uh, Red's Debris Removal and Hauling, always appreciate Red. Haven't seen him in a while. Uh, he's played before, though. And then Classic Home Billiards, Bruce Bird, doing some great things. Uh, what did he have, Brandon? Some seven-foot diamonds available? Yeah, seven- and nine-foot diamonds available. They are will be available right in the beginning of install for around the June time for anybody interested. Great pricing and even more professional installation, so if you want a diamond table and you want it sort of quickly, that's who you go to Yes, right now. definitely appreciate you, Bruce. We appreciate you. You're doing great work, man. Uh, he's done the tables at Smoking Q in the past, Yes, so that's one of the reasons why they play so great. Uh, first of all, Pat, this is your first time playing in a tournament at Smoking Q, man. What do yeah. you think? I mean, I you, it. Yeah? Yeah, I love it. You I like the it. tables? You like the lights? You like the atmosphere? I love everything about Smoking Q football. Awesome. Everything. Every table. I mean, I, I probably only played on. I think I might have played on the same table like three times in a row. Did you? I think so. I know my match with you and your match with Clay was on the same table. Yeah, and then I also played William uh, Wood. William Wood, yes. and we were also on the same. I think I played okay. on the same table all day. Well, we try to keep you close to the uh, streaming <laughs> equipment just in case stuff happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but good, it was great. Good job to have around for sure. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Brandon, you played there many, many times. Um, it's my favorite place to play overall. Yeah. It really is. I love the equipment. It's challenging equipment is what makes it great, but it's also every table is going to play the same. Well, every diamond is going to play like a diamond. Every Brunswick will play like a Brunswick. Yeah, so, and they no do got, question. They do got 10 diamonds now and only yes. uh, six Brunswicks left. So Are they are they doing a thing where they're like trying to get to all diamonds? Uh, I've, He's talked about it. Yeah, I'm not sure what the ultimate goal is. No. At one point it was to get all but the back row, but now he's kind of put some on the back row. Hmm. So I don't really know what the goal is anymore. Uh, okay. But, Pat, you never went there before when he had zero diamonds back in the day. No. no or when he only had one and people had to fight over it. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Big upgrade. First yes. time I went there was, let's see, from 45, it was about 22, 23 years ago, five tables, all antique-style Brunswick's. Oh, wow. 14 was still there in the very in beginning. The yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it remember, wasn't that tight then. It was normal yeah. pockets. But, I remember yes. going when uh, I remember going when the tight 14 break-and-run mm, table gosh. was – yeah, which it's sad that that table's gone now. It's really sad. Was it Bruce Campbell, Campbell in nine at Rackham? They were probably about the same. Uh, it played a little quicker though, mm. but it was probably it might have actually been a little tighter. Honestly, wow. yeah. yeah, it was. I think is yeah. put it this way. I've made balls on the break and run at Rackham's. I've never. Yeah. I've been drawn five, six times and smoking Q. Yeah. Never made a ball. Oh wow. There's a reason why their break and run on Wednesday nights got up to ten thousand, forty thousand. I was going to say one to forty, fifty yeah, grand, forty or fifty thousand. Yes. 000 what? Time. yes. Yeah. They had 100 people a couple Wednesdays to come play in the tournament. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, maybe you'll get that way again, and you can show up 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I broke for yeah. a thousand. I broke for a thousand twice in a row. Didn't make a ball. I got draw. They do two drawings that night. Yeah, on each night, I got both drawings one night. Ooh. Two opportunities. They, Zero dollars. They still do two drawings right now, but one drawing is only like a few hundred a ball. But yeah, yeah. I got drawn a couple weeks ago. Scratch. So there's that. Oh damn. Yeah. Um. But let's get back to this tournament. Yes. This tournament, a fun, exciting tournament. It was points event number three. Remember, we're doing ten points events, and then you can qualify for the eleventh, which is more money added. Uh. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the show, but let's go ahead and get into our cash players. Uh, as always, I'll start at the bottom and work our way up. So we'll pay out eight people as always, quarter of the field. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Love when tournaments pay out more people. It's the way it should be. Um, seventh and eighth, we had Todd Milam. That's back to back seventh place finishes, and Liam Nguyen, first tournament that we've seen him in in a while. So uh, Pat, we'll start with you, man. What do you think about Todd and Liam's uh, tournament? Uh, good tournament. Todd, he um he had a nice little string. He mm-hmm. beat uh Saul. He lost to Monik, who we'll eventually talk about as well. He got yeah. uh, pretty pretty far. Ended up beating up on Barry McDonald. He beat Chris Brower, which I think That's is very win. noticeable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or notable, I should say. Um, and then also another notable one against uh Ricardo. Ricardo yeah. Car- uh, Carcamo. Yeah, Carcamo. Yeah, Ricky Carcamo. Carcamo. Carcamo yeah. Ricky Carcamo. So yeah. That's a, that's a really good run. Yeah, that's some really good wins by by Todd there. What do you think about Liam? We haven't seen him in a while. I have not seen him in a while, and I was actually hoping to be able to to see him on the stream table. Yeah, because I haven't really had a chance to like actually sit down and watch his game. I mm. usually just hear oh yeah what you guys have to say about him. Um, but yeah, sadly through, he didn't make the stream table. Yeah, you know, that's gotta, bad. That's bad on our part. Got to see if we can <laughs> we can make that happen yeah. this time. But um, ends up beating the. Uh, uh, Jeremy Pereira, I think he's definitely highly favored oh, yeah, to win that sure. one. Yeah. Uh, ends up losing against the winner, who we'll talk about later on. Has a notable win against Brian Francis, beats Javier, uh, Myron, and then ultimately loses to you as yeah, well. So a really good run for him to, to make it as far as he did. To get very, to very good run. And I'm not surprised to see Liam in the money ever in any of our tournaments. Uh, Todd, back-to-back, that's awesome. I think maybe, I don't know if Todd will admit it, but maybe this will be his favorite place to play because, you know, he's played at other pool halls in our tournaments and not cashed. Mm. And now he's cashed back to back at Smoking Cube. Yeah. So, uh, Brandon, what do you think about Todd and Liam? I loved watching Todd play. Yep. I watched Todd. I called Todd's match against Monik, like that we'll talk about, um, and also got to just see him from the side tables. He was playing well. He's got some good wins. He just he's been super consistent lately. Oh, That's yeah. two in a row, like you said. So definitely a fan. Good to see Liam come out. Mm-hmm. Liam, you know what? You pretty he is a super consistent player mm-hmm. all the time. What you see. With him is what you're going to get. He's a strong player, can get out from anywhere, plays smart, and then he proved it that day. Like you said, good notable wins, especially against Brower, for sure. Right. Yeah, that's a good win. So, definitely. And uh, you said Javier, it's another yeah. good win. Good yeah. Javier. It's a good win, too. So, yeah. ab- absolutely. Losing to you is no shame, that's for sure. <laughs> yep. So, no, very pleased with both their play. They both played great all day. Yeah, both these guys deserve to be in the money after some of the wins that they had. Even, all right, so we'll kind of delve into it. Todd's match with Monik. I mean, Todd did not play bad. I got the chance to call that match, so I saw yeah, every single thing. Yes. Yeah. So, because um, it, it shows O two. Yeah, it's two to zero. Yeah. Well, it was three to two, three to two, and Todd had two yeah, opportunities, really and he'll wow. admit it. And Monica got the better of him. Now, Monica would jump out quick in the sets, but Todd would make that comeback. Mm. You know, right there when it was a little bit too late. But um, no, Todd. Even though the match he lost to um, Monica, and I believe he lost to Hank. Yes. Okay, there is no shame in either of those losses. No, he got played, a set off on Hank too. Yeah. Oh, yep. They did go third set. I did forget about that. So, super impressed with how Todd played. And like I say, he's been doing this the last few months. He's yeah, gonna exactly. Keep, yeah. He's gonna keep getting better. Yeah, and I mean back to back caches. So good for him, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's move on to fifth and sixth place, shall we? Do we have. Right. To? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He beat me. He beat me to uh, a good move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fifth, sixth place, Justin Clark. That's me. Uh. Two out of two this year on caches. Two tournaments, two caches. That's pretty good. And uh, Hank Powell, same thing. Two out of two on caches this year. Um, we both cashed at uh, Irish Q. Now mm-hmm. we both cashed for the non-ball tournament spoke to you. Uh, Brandon, what would you think about uh, Hank, and, Hank and I? Well, I got the chance to watch your matches from the distance later on the stream after I wasn't there. And both of you, I'll, t- I'll start with you first. I mean, you had some really impressive wins. You made a great cross bank on the one down and pulled great shape yeah. on the two. Shout out to Pat for uh, yes, that was for a, the for the highlight video that we put well, up on YouTube. That was a well deserved <laughs> that was a well deserved highlight. You played Renal tough. I mean, I know that's 
who we'll get into here eventually, who eventually put you out. I think you played him twice, didn't you? Yes. So the only person to beat me. It, no shame <laughs> in that. I mean, he is, you know, one of the better players around. But, uh, no, you played strong all day. It was fun to watch. And same exact thing with Hank. Um, Hank, you pretty much know what you're going to get every single time he comes. He's going to play good pool. He beat some good players in this tournament. You know, he did have a tough match with Todd, but he did pull it out. So, great performance all around by both of y'all, for Thanks. sure. I agree. Um, Pat, what's your thoughts? I got a couple of thoughts on both of us as well, but I'm going to yeah. let you go first. Uh, trash can. So, let's yes, mm. just right, so that's me. <laughs> so, what's your thoughts on Hank? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. Man. Um, I think uh, you had a really great run. You won all of the matches that you were definitely supposed to. You and Renal, um is a toss-up. Maybe he has a slight edge. Um, but the – score doesn't necessarily reflect how the match actually went, I don't think. Agreed. Um, and then... We can get more into detail because both those were on the stream as well. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and then against myself and Rico, we were the only ones, if you whoever you beat, that actually got a yeah. set off of you. Yeah. So I remember you talked about before how um, it's a little bit tougher for you to like play your friends and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I was wondering if like maybe in both of those matches that that was the case. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, it, it takes me a while to get going against y'all. Yeah. Until yeah. I realize, like, oh, man, I might actually lose. Let me <laughs> tighten up a little bit. <laughs> That's um, set. It gives yeah. you that glimmer yeah. of hope, and then all of a sudden. Yeah. Well, because me and Patty even talked about it afterwards. Like, I came with it as the match went on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I started off a little slow, but then as we got closer to the end, yeah. I felt like I played a lot better the last few rounds. Yeah. It, it but, definitely, yeah. there was definitely a different gear uh, and some tightening up that you did in that. Yeah. Uh, in that second half of our match. Yeah. And so. I think that was just me just kind of like, hey, I'm having fun playing a friend. And it was like, okay, I need to I need to win. Like, right. this is, like, serious time. Yeah. But we've watched you do this. For, I've watched you do this for the last 10 years. So, like, yeah. I'm not shocked <laughs> at all. Yeah, and it was, it was honestly really the same thing against Rico, too. Like, the same exact thing. I it's thought you were going to lose. Oh, yeah. Rico. I really did. No, no yeah. offense. No, between the two, between the two, between you and Rico, Rico should have beat me. Yeah. Okay. Like, he had chances. He yeah. missed a couple late balls, like, the third set. Yeah, you, mm, yeah. you've mentioned it, so I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, with um, he knows it. He's on. He's honest with himself. He'll oh yeah, the same sure, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm supposed to win every match that I won. Right. I think the the two with y'all were closer because y'all are my friends. Like, I think if I didn't like you, I probably maybe three o three come out a little harder. Yeah. No, not three o three. He had a really he had two good outs. Oh, yeah. Pat had really two good outs. I mean, I think, and like I told you, Pat, you just need to loosen up a little bit. Right. Here. He right. looked too tense there, like as we got going too. Yeah. Like, loosen up and have fun. We're playing a game. Yeah. 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 It's all like, nothing. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I think if you look at our. It's always uh, easier for the better players to Right? Yeah. It was really, uh, always it's remember just that. Wah, wah, wah. Well, I mean, if you just. If you look <laughs> but, at our, but you're right. You have a if you look point. at our two demeanors while you're we were right. playing, he's like super serious. Let me go yeah. sit down when it's not my turn. And I'm just like smiling, like kind of looking around, like, let's see what <laughs> else is going on. Running a tournament. Yeah. Like, let's see what else is going on. Yeah. Like, you know, there's like, you know, at the end of the day, if I lose, I lose. If I win, awesome. You know what I mean? Like, it's. It's not going to change how I feel about the games. Like, I'm having fun no matter what. Right. Exactly yeah. right. And that's, yeah. that's, and that's Honestly, why these I, tournaments run so well. Yeah, and if I lost, I would have just went down and had a cheeseburger and then commentated whatever the next yeah. match was. So, yeah, yeah well, you know. It's it would have been great <laughs> commentary if you would have beat them and then would have had to listen to you two commentate yeah. together. Oh, yeah. That been epic. But I still would have had fun. It would have been great. Right. <laughs> For sure. But what do you think about Hank, though? Uh, Hank, great yeah. run. He is he is probably in my top two, top three players that I like to watch right yes. now. Um, love watching Hank play. His really strong side. Is he um is he next on our list of people that haven't had a trophy yet that probably deserves one if he plays more? Yeah, I actually the um I want to say the last might have been the last tournament or the tournament before last maybe, but I called that he is now in clay shoes when we thought Clay yeah. was in that spot waiting to just get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a Hank's that guy. Right now, yeah. so. And uh, the two things I wanted to point out about Hank and I, um, Hank was my pick to win the tournament beforehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we haven't talked about that yet. Yeah, which came out a little a little short and then all three of us, I believe, picked Justin to finish fifth, sixth. So good mm. job, guys. <laughs> Let's go. I believe all three of us got at least seven out of the eight picks correct. Not in order, uh, but as, on the list. The My, mine was a little off. I, have, I think I, I did I, get I the winner. Yeah. Well, I mean, as uh, as we always say, the cream rises at the top. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I mean, and you look at the Fargos. Mm -hmm. I think the top six players are the top six Fargo. In this that tournament, would make I sense. Think. Yeah, I think I could be wrong, but. It's not not in order. Obviously. No, I'll say not it's, in order for yeah. sure. Renault would be the highest. Yeah, but it's. Uh, I definitely think they were the top six. Uh, fourth place. Let's move on to the fourth place player. His first event of the year. First event of the year. Monik Surrey. 
for the fourth place finish. Uh, man, he's playing really good right now. He's on a run. I honestly, for a moment, thought that maybe he might just snap the whole thing off. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pat, what did you think about Monik? That was the first time I actually got to really watch his game, mm-hmm. um, especially since it was on the streaming table. I got a chance to broadcast and commentate on the Clay Davis match mm-hmm. between him and Clay, and that, he hit one of the greatest shots I've ever seen somebody hit. Oh, the Z shot. Z shot. Also, shout out to Pat for the highlight video. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need, baby. Killing it with the highlight videos, um, for sure. Yeah, I had to front load you on that one. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, but no, he was, that, that shot was just a testament to how he was he only lost to he lost to Vinal and Clay, and ended up losing to Clay uh, as well. But he plays so smartly, absolutely. He's, so consistent. He's such a smart player. Oh yeah, like the, the some of the defensive shots that he was playing uh, when he was playing against Clay specifically, I it was nice to see. It yeah, was really nice to see. I could I could keep watching him play and keep learning from him every time I saw him. It was really cool. Yeah, his defense is very impressive for sure. Uh, Brandon, what did you think about Monik's tournament run? I thought he was going to win the tournament. So you thought so too? I yeah. really did. And I, that's put me on a polygraph if you want. And the reason I say that is because I watched, obviously called his match with Todd. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw him with different players just playing great and just locking them up every other time. And then the beginning of his match with Clay he started, started off, off yeah. hot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, he this is not a fluke today. He's – really showing why he's made it this far. And um, he can thank V. Andy for getting him good and warm for the day before. But uh, I love this game. I'm quickly becoming a fan of watching him play. I feel like I learn something every time I watch him. Yeah. So especially with the shots he was making. Yeah. Um, he had an unfortunate role in the Hill Hill game with Clay in the mm. first set. They kind of let Clay walk out. And then I don't think he much recovered from that. Sometimes all it takes is so, one role. That's I mean, right. Especially but with two good players. Overall, he played amazing. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Great uh, great tournament run, Monik. Uh, third place. Let's get to third place now. Uh, the guy that just played in the pro event at the Super Wheeler <laughs> Expo. 11 6 loser to Jason Shaw. Uh, Renal Bot. Renal Bot, third place. Um, I guess we'll start off with Pat because he's going crazy over there. Pat, yeah. Pat what do you think about Renal at the Smoking Q tournament getting third place? Win a tournament, man. <laughs> win one already. Golly. I feel like I'm Renal, and I'm just like, uh, I just want him to get over the hump so bad. Yeah. He's, an, he's such an amazing player. He's so yes. talented. It's just those moments where he runs out of gas. He's playing against a very strong opponent, usually Clay, from the last time that I've, you know, last few times that I've been watching and streaming. Um, and the other, his opponent just isn't. You know, there's yeah. just, he, he ends up just getting that ill roll or falling off that high gear just at the right time for the other. Um, but outside of that, man, I, I, I can't say enough positive things about the guy. There is no weakness in his game. He's a shot maker. He plays excellent defense. He can kick like crazy. He oh, can yeah. jump if he has to. There's really You can't hide on the table when you play him, so you better get out. Because if you don't, he comes to the table, he's getting out. Super strong. Yeah, he's definitely playing really good and solidifying himself in the top three pretty much every Six tournament. Six racks against Jason Shaw? Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah, eleven six. That was a good match. It was a good match. Um, Jason though plays on a like we're talking about these guys Different playing. Different plane, yeah. Yeah, it's not even close actually. <laughs> I mean, it's just proof that weird things happen. In I mean, I, I think Ronaldo will tell you this too. Jason probably could have won that match eleven four if he really wanted to. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't even trying. I, I, hey, I believe <laughs> you were there to see it firsthand. So I yeah, mean, yeah. that's well, I'll, I think, I'll give I think you that credit. If you, if you would have told me that Ronaldo got one rack, yeah. I'm just as well, impressed. I'll change any break. I expect Ronaldo to get. He's going to break. He broke eight times. I expect him to get at least four. I don't sure. expect Ronaldo yeah. to get skunked like that. I mean, uh, I know it could happen, but I'll I, I, break. I, believe it or not, I really don't by anyone in planet Earth. Well, it's mm. skunked. It's mm. alternating breaks now. Exactly. So, I mean, Ronaldo should win at least half his racks. Just like tennis and the way it should yeah. be. Yeah. Alternate serve, alternate break. Yeah, so like I said, he broke eight times in that match. He's yeah. supposed to win at least four, and he got six. No matter what they say, Renal, yeah. I'm so impressed, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm a, great job. No, I'm definitely impressed. Nah, nah, too I late. Nothing but great things great to say. <laughs> I'm ready to go. No, I'm definitely impressed. I'm yeah. just saying. But, Brandon, what do you think about Renal and the Smoke and Q tournament? I had an argument with myself. Okay, there you go. That's I love these because I get so in depth with them. Did you win ready. the argument? No. Never, oh. you, never, <laughs> you never win because I have to ask you two guys the question to settle it. Okay, the answer is always and yes. All five people watching. Either yes or seven. I don't know what the question is, though. I'm things. trying to debate with myself who is the most consistent player in this tournament, Renal or Clay. That's close. Yeah. Ooh. Clay. I think the numbers say Clay, but 
you just know that Renault is going to be top four every single time. And yes, I feel the same way about Clay, but I've seen them both do it so well that it's actually an honest topic. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I say all that to say he played great all day long, and that's another player every time I watch him, I learn something, especially from safety games. Yeah. He's. I think he's about one of the only ones that could have slowed you down that day. Which yeah. I still think you played that. I'm saying that to speak high of Renault's game because he was on a tear and he was playing great. It took someone like Renault to take him down. Yeah, that's so. Um, but I. I don't want to believe there's a mental block there as far as winning the tournaments. I see what you're saying. Win one, come on, it's your time. He's gonna get through it. Yeah. He's gonna hoist one soon. I really do believe that. I wonder if he if he really. Uh... Uh, I don't know if prioritizes is, is the right word. I don't know. Do you think he really wants to win one of ours and get over that hump yes. more than more than we want to see him win? You know what I mean? I oh, think yeah. so. Like, 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 is it a big deal to him to to win that? It's close. It's, to it's close. That. So to watch close. him take the trophy home in the ten ball event, like mm-hmm. honestly, and Renal, I'm just going to say it. Look like a kid at Christmas, hugging your trophy, take going <laughs> home with it. I, I look, still- mom. I still say that's a paper trophy, though. He didn't really win it. He's saying it. <laughs> he split. You still went. You know what? You still took the trophy home. Possession's nine tenths of the law. Therefore, you're a winner. Period. That's Tommy Gunn's belt. <laughs> <laughs> it always comes back to rock. That's dude. fantastic. <laughs> Listen there, and honestly, yes, there is truth in what you're saying. I'm not going to say it. Not. I would not be making that joke if I did not like Renault Ball. Oh, exactly. Okay. okay. But um, I, we're going to see him hoist it by winning the winner's bracket and winning the high, and winning the final. Right. It's going to happen. I agree. And uh, I'm going to say two things on Renault before we move into the second place player. Uh, one, I'm tired of you beating me. That's three straight times in this tournament that you're beating me. And, uh, <laughs> and two, yeah, I think maybe he just hasn't figured out how to play his best at the end of the tournament like some other people. We talk about it with Mike Davis a lot, you know, how he plays his best at the end of mm-hmm. tournaments. Renal, I feel like, hasn't quite figured that out. You know what I'm saying? Thinking like, more peak, about winning than shooting. Well, he he peaks he peaks too early. Like you know, me and Brandon, big college basketball fan. Shout out to the Good Blue Bad Blue podcast. But um, you know, you don't peak in January. You know what I'm saying? In college basketball, you peak in March. Yes. Mm-hmm. Renal peaks third round, maybe. I'm just I don't know, but he's not peaking at the finals. He peaks getting yeah. closer to the hot seat. Yeah. He like runs that. into like, UConn and get buzz saw. And even we mm. mentioned it a little earlier when I was like how I was like. When me and you played, Pat, yeah, how maybe I didn't start off good, but then I peaked at the end. Right, Renal plays great throughout the whole tournament, but it's like he needs to figure out how to just maybe take it down a notch, let some of the matches get close mm-hmm. if need be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, don't put that pressure on himself to just win every match three o three o three o three o. Like, maybe let some of them go three one or to a third set. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, because really, he's not going to lose. I, he's not going to lose to most of the people he plays. So let them be close and just mentally just be prepared for the finals. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Kind of, I mean, kind of don't, uh, you know, saving that Nas bottle for the end. Yeah. When or you get closer to the finish line when you really mm-hmm. try to turn it on. And then yeah. that's when you kind of exude that focus, you know. Yeah. Or we can talk about uh, Pat's favorite basketball player, LeBron, and how, you know, sometimes when he was with the Cavs, he wouldn't even try until uh, the All-Star break. And, and then still averaging the triple double. Yeah, and then still make the finals because he peaked at the right time. Right. I mean, you don't peak in November, December, like, you know, the Pacers, who were maybe the best team. <laughs> you know, they lost in the finals in in-season tournament. Now look at them. Um, so that's my two thoughts on it all. Second place. Let's get into second place. And this dude, I'm not sure last time we had a finals without him. I know technically it was the last tournament, the 10 ball. Mm-hmm. But I'm not even sure that tournament actually happened. I think maybe we just made that tournament up and it didn't actually happen. But second place, once again in the finals, Clayton Davis. I mean, I, I'm i running out of things to say about the dude, so I'm going to let you all speak first. Uh, Brandon, you yes. go first on, on Clay's well, non-ball tournament. That's oh. easy because I was in that path of destruction, <laughs> and so were you. Yeah, I was first up. <laughs> yeah. So you can talk about yours. I'll talk about mine. Um, I have nothing to say other than he beat my absolute brains out. All credit to him. I missed a couple of chances. I don't think it would have made a difference, especially with alternate break. He broke and ran two of the racks out of all the ones that he broke. And if I made the slightest mistake, he made me pay. 3-1-3-0. Three, three, it was an absolute whooping. And then he kept doing it all the way through to the hot seat. Yeah. So I'd like to apologize to you because I was definitely <laughs> the uh, uh, 
the, the match <laughs> on the kerosene there for his war pack. You don't owe me an apology because <laughs> it wouldn't have made a difference. I mean, he just ran through me like well, he came knife, out, hot knife through butter. Well, I think he came out just on a mission because yes, he, he did. I feel like he beat you pat in like 10 minutes. It was pretty It was pretty fast. It was like 27 minutes. He, uh, he it came, was pretty freaking quick. I, not not going to lie, my first yeah. couple shots, you would have thought like, okay, these boys are about to put on the show. Like, I banked <laughs> in and I was getting position. But like you said, the second I missed, Bye-bye. That's and it. that's what hard work and dedication does. And honestly, developing a love for the game like he has. I love watching his journey. I was thinking about this the other day. When I met him 10 years ago, I gave him two games. Now you could. Now I wouldn't even play him with two game spot. Not mm-hmm. even in a 4-2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just what he's turned into. But um, he's great for the game. He's great for the tournament. And I want him to keep putting the bounty up because – Somebody's gonna get him. I'm telling you. Yeah. Even through the nowhere. losses, I always enjoy playing him. Every time. I, yeah. Every time. He's not just a person on this. He's our friend. We love him and couldn't be happier for him because he he just earned it. I mean, every single time he gets up there, he plays with everything he's got. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, the day that he doesn't cash one of these tournaments. It's gonna be like Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson. It's gonna be like what just happened here. Like, <laughs> honestly, like even if he loses to two great players, it's gonna be like what just happened. Yeah. Like, how did this guy not make the top eight? He's got the full series figured out. Clay has it figured out. He's got tournament play figured out. And it's fun to watch. It's really fun yeah. to watch. You almost feel like he's unbeatable. And that's why it was a little shocking to watch him lose the finals. I'm, I'm going to say I'm gonna say this because um, I want to light some fire under people. He's going to win the points. I mean, he's a, he's up there. And we'll talk about that more yes, so at will. the end. But, yeah, he's uh, got a good got a good spot so far, yeah. yeah. Um, but he did lose the finals of this tournament. Yes, he did. Um, he beat the guy the first time. Mm-hmm. Lost to him the second time. Because mm-hmm. the finals is just one race. Um, Clint Clark, our winner. This is the first time he's played in one of our events with this format as well. So it was good to see him finally come and play. I was super happy that he won just because I like seeing new people play. Mm-hmm. Even though I do enjoy watching Clay kick butt. Uh, it was fun to watch Clint play. And I told everybody at the beginning of the day, there were three Clarks playing. I would take one to win this tournament. Really, I was saying I would take Clint to win. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, Brandon, what do you think about Clint Clark and his uh, his nine ball championship? Um, so I had a gut feeling in the pre show. They asked me, you know, we always do our top eight predictions, and I said Clint Clark. Good choice. Because it's not that he's necessarily the best player in the tournament. I think we just talked about the best player in the tournament, but he's definitely top three. And for whatever reason, just I've seen Clint play great tournament pool. And he did it here. I mean, the only match he lost, obviously, was the clay in the hot seat. Mm-hmm. You know, turn around and beat Renault, I think, twice. Mm-hmm. Beat Renault yes. twice. Yeah, beat Renault what, twice. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. not surprised. I mean, I don't want to say I'm not surprised, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not surprised because Clint's been strong for a long time. He's, he's going to keep being that guy. Hope he comes to every event. I really do. He probably will now. He signed up for our next one. Good. Yes. 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 And I'm sure I might pick him again. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, well-deserved. I mean, he played like a warrior all day. The thing I love about Clint is he actually plays the same 12 hours later compared to when he started. Mm. Yeah. He's a stayer. Yeah, yeah. He really is. That's why he's such a great tournament player. Super consistent. Yes. It's so interesting that you say that, too, because one thing that I did notice, he had a super high gear Oh yeah. early on. And the first thing I thought of was like, okay, he's probably going to burn out. Yeah. But it was there was something mm-hmm. in the finals, man. In the finals, there was just that extra little step that he was able to take. Um, Jacob Blake, Liam Wynn, Hank Powell, Renal Bot twice, Clayton Davis in the finals. That was his path to victory. Yeah, those were all players that I would. I mean, did they all cash except for Jacob? Yeah, Jacob was right on the yeah. outskirts, wasn't he? Everybody, uh, yeah, yeah, I think thirteenth. There you go. Okay. There you go. And then Jacob Blake did take him to a uh, third, third set, yeah. which is interesting to your point earlier about kind of not necessarily being in cruise control early on, but really not trying to burn out your gas yeah. tank early mm-hmm. on as well. And like maybe allowing those first couple of matches to be a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not know just how good Clint Clark was. Uh, you would think that after listening to y'all describe these people every time <laughs> a, a tournament starts, I would actually listen and like not be we surprised. We try to tell you. We, we try, try to, to tell me every yeah. time. Yeah. What did I tell you right in the booth? So who you should buy? Yeah, he said, "Hey, you need to put twenty dollars trying to get that guy <laughs> right there." But uh, what, what did he? What, what did he end up going for? Ah uh, man, I don't remember. 
No. Larry Hughes bought them though. Okay. I think it was near two hundred. Yeah, yeah. I think I got I got up I to think. about like forty yeah. bucks and I was 210 like, right. maybe. Two ten maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't have the I don't keep track of the record. But <laughs> super strong performance and um and seeing him win, I, I agree with you, Jesse. I love seeing uh, somebody different win. Although you may be rooting for your favorite player like a clay to win. I love seeing clay win. Especially trying to get back to backs and things like that, but just seeing that new person come in and, and hold that trophy is like it just keeps proving the format. Number one, um, that it's anybody's match. It's not just one person's tournament every time everybody mm-hmm. shows up. And then it's also it just makes it a little bit more refreshing and exciting to watch that match. For sure. You asked me, you know, favorite local players I love to watch play. I forgot to mention his name. Okay. Because he's a fast player. He and is. he get, and he gets faster throughout the rack, and he gets more precise. And you're like, oh, he's out. Like you just know it. Like he he's is. fun to watch. He's and you know what's funny about that? When I was, yes. I was making his highlight video, his winner's highlight mm-hmm. video, I think I sent it to you. Oh, we haven't posted. It'll yeah. be up on YouTube. Yes. Yeah, at some point, yeah. It'll be up on YouTube at some point yep. soon. Um, when I was making that, I noticed I was like, yo, he plays just as fast as Larry. Yeah, almost, almost, yeah. Larry's Almost. a little quicker. Larry's Almost. a little quicker. Larry's a one stroke, Clint's a two yeah. stroke. Yeah, I was just about to say, there might be one, like a difference of a stroke in there. Larry's the best player I've ever watched. Larry just gets to the ball quicker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, too. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Clint plays fast, and I think that's a part of what makes it so fun to watch him that he's fast and he's accurate yes. and he's yeah. smart. And there's, he, he, his game has no weaknesses. Yeah, I think. Um, just being human. Yeah. It's definitely uh, not going to be a surprise if Clint wins more often if he plays in more of these. Um, that was our third points event, and that was our third different winner. So, I'm okay if we do ten for ten. Not gonna lie. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, or eleven so. for eleven. Let's, for yeah, it. let's right. do eleven for eleven. I'm trying to get one of them ten, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was our top eight, man. Clint Clark, Clay Davis, Renal Bot, Monic Surrey, Hank Powell, Justin Clark, Liam Nguyen, Todd Milam. Congratulations, guys, for making it to the money. I'm gonna name three people that I was surprised did not make the cash. Y'all tell me how you feel, or tell me if there's somebody else that you think should have cashed. Um, Rico Gonzalez finished ninth place. He had mm-hmm. cashed back to back times. This time only got ninth. Larry Hughes had cashed his one other time. Finished ninth place also. And Brian Francis, who got fourth in our ten ball event, finished seventeenth uh, in this one. Those are three guys that I was kind of expecting maybe to be in the money. I don't know who you would take out to put them there, but I would not have been surprised if they were there just because of how they have played so far this year. Um, Pat, what did you think? Or do you think those three would you have been surprised if they were there? Or is there somebody else that I was missing that? you know, you thought would be in the money? No, I feel like any of those guys are interchangeable with the top. Yeah. Any of them. I, I'm looking at the list right now, and I don't really see a standout that's like, yeah, I can't believe that that person didn't make the money, considering okay. that who all is in it. Yeah. And then top being there at eighth, like, well-deserved, he's playing strong, loves playing out of Smoking Key, obviously. So, if I, if you, you know, gunned them ahead, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, you agree with that as well, Brandon? I do. Yeah. If I had to think of another player other than myself, Brower. Mm. Chris Brower, yeah. Mm-hmm. He w- he finished ninth place also, I believe. Right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah so no, he, was... he finished uh, 13th, I oh, thought. Yeah, 13th yeah, through 16th. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 13th, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Him, Javier, Brian Cazell, and Jenna Cazell. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty solid 13th right there. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time before a couple of those guys reach up to the money. Mm-hmm. Um, another reason why I like this format a lot those guys have a chance in this format. Um, all right, so let's move on to how we did. The all three right. of us. All three of us played this time. After the time before, only you playing, Brandon. So this time all three of us played. Um, we'll start with Pat. And I'll just go from, you know, just go from the bottom up. Uh, although you two Todd. You two Todd, but on digital pool with us. Have Pat. I'm all right being the foundation okay. all right. of yeah. the conversation. <laughs> so Pat, Pat Dixon finishes 17th place. Here's how his three matches went. Loses to Clay Davis 2-0. to zero. Beats William Wood two to zero, loses to Justin Clark two to one. Uh, tough, tough, tough draw. Yeah. Um, let's get to uh, uh, that's all I gotta say really. Tough draw. I thought, you, <laughs> I thought you played well. You played well against me. Yeah. Uh, you probably obviously played well against Woody if you beat him two sets to zero because mm-hmm. he's not a bad player. Yeah. Uh, but he's definitely getting better. He's playing in all of our events, which I love to see. He definitely wants to get better. Um, he's going to AP, to Vegas for APA singles. Nice. So good luck out there. Um. Yeah, that's just a tough draw, man. I mean, that's a draw. Two out of those three players are in the top six. Yeah. So that's brutal. Um, before we get to your thoughts on your tournament, Pat, let's hear what Brandon has to say about those three matches. About, I mean, draws play a big difference in pool. Yeah. And it's not an exact science. And, of course, anything can still happen. But, 
you know, iron sharpens iron. Yep. Take this as a learning experience. Go with it. I mean, I still think you didn't play bad. You just ran into two buzz saws. Happens. Yeah. And I feel like you won the match you should have won. Yes. So, you know, it's not slighting William in the least. Yeah. I'm, but yeah. um, I'm going to say I think it's pretty awesome that you – I don't know if you looked at the bracket before you played Woody, but to beat Woody after playing Clay mm. and then to possibly, if you had looked at the bracket, knowing that you might be playing me or Renal after that, tells me a lot that you beat Woody because it's easy to lose that match going, oh, man, I just lost to Clay, and then next I might have to play another great player. Mm-hmm. Um, so good job. I mean, honestly, winning that match, two to, especially 2-0. to zero. Um, But, yeah, Pat, what did you think, I mean, about your tournament, man? I honestly enjoyed myself. I yep. thought I played very, very well. I thought um, – because, you know, we talked about this before with my with my game. I'm trying not to go in with, you know, super, super high expectations, although I'm trying to win every time, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to do my best to just uh, – better than I did the last time. And I thought so far this is the best uh, that I've played um, consistently through uh, the matches that I had. I really enjoyed the way I played with Clay starting out. Um, With Woody, that actually might have been my weakest. Yeah. My weakest uh, game all day. Um, And then when I was playing you, I had a couple chances to possibly even take that one as well. So I think all in all, I was happy with, uh, with, with how I played all day. Woody... I'm going to apologize to you right now if you see this. I just realized that I called you Wally when we shook oh. hands after our match. Oh, Whoops. Nice. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Definitely yeah. you're not him. Um, but, yeah, no, I had a good time. I always love playing in our tournaments, man. Um, and I I love playing against people that are much better than me. Love it. Because it's the only, only way you can get better, man. Love playing against Clay. Love playing against Justin. Even when I'm sitting there watching you guys shoot, I'm watching and I'm paying attention to everything that you guys do. Stroke decision-making, when you decide to pot a ball, when you decide to play defense, how you're trying to get to that defense, I'm looking at it all. Yeah, um, your goal is to win every event. My goal is just to uh, hit every shot good. Mm. <laughs> I don't even think about winning a match, winning the tournament. All I'm thinking is, on my next shot, make sure I make it. Yeah, That's literally all I'm thinking. Like, I don't think, like, oh, man, it'd be cool to win this tournament, or mm. oh, man, it'd be cool to get up there. Like All I'm thinking is, okay, well, it's my turn to shoot. Let me make this shot. Yeah. Yeah, so... Just say a mindset, man. Like well, one well, shot at a time. One for, shot at a time. For context, I'm not thinking about yeah. that in the match. Well, I, I don't think about it. Yeah, but, but even going into the day, I never once before the tournament started thinking to myself, "Oh, it'd be cool to win this tournament." Mm. Like never once. Yeah, exactly. So I'm glad to know I'm not the only one that takes that approach because I always used to tell myself, "Take a look around the room or look at my bracket." Oh, oh, I should get here. Yeah, well, yeah. once I came into every tournament with no expectations, I don't even look at the bracket anymore. At all, mm. ever. I never look at the bracket. Well, I'm in it. it. I just wait for the name and my name yeah. and the table. Yeah. And I'll deal with uh, – you can't prepare. You uh, you can't honestly prepare yourself for it. you got to yeah. deal with what comes with it. Ever since then, my tournament results have been way, way better. Mm, okay. Completely overall, between this and other tournaments, um, I mean, it's, that's the mind frame I take. Yeah. It's – this. these tournaments are tough because I have to look at the brackets. I always kind of have to yeah. look at the <laughs> right. um, Yeah, I don't I, – in other tournaments, I never try to look at the bracket ever. Um I think that's just the smartest way to go. But let's move on to Brandon's yes. tournament. Uh, Short also, and sweet. Yeah, also finished 17th. Um, you beat William Wood. Mm-hmm. By the way, all five of us pool series people, Justin, Pat, Brandon, Rico, and Clay, all pretty much played each other. <laughs> yeah. Very weird tournament. Very strange. Uh, although that happened. This and pool was sick of us. But that yes. also proves that our bracket is 100% random. Legit. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes, of course. Because if we tried to cheat the system, maybe we put it to We would all... seed players. Yeah, we would be the four seeded. Uh, or the five seeded, so we don't right. play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, no, I'm just throwing that out there. It's very... It was strange when we looked at the bracket and said, holy cow, we're all pretty much playing each other. Um, <laughs> so, Brandon beats William Wood 2-0. to zero, Loses to Clay Davis 2-0. to zero, And then, I guess you kind of had to leave during yes. Rico's match. Um, yes. It was a change. I will say... Um, Clay seems to be in your head. I think you have chances against him every time, but for some reason, you don't capitalize. Um, again, another good win against Woody, though. I mm-hmm. hate that Woody had to play two people on the show. Like, that's yes. a bad draw for him also. Let's talk about Woody having kind of a bad draw. Um, and then your match with Rico looked like it was pretty close. I, it looked like you were playing pretty well the whole day, Brandon. I thought, honestly, you might go on a little bit of a run, um, which we'll let you talk in a second about sure. what kind of went wrong and why you had to leave. But... Yeah, Pat, what did you think about Brandon's performance in this tournament, man? 
I had no, I mean, it was short lived. Yeah. It was short lived. I honestly don't really have too much of an opinion. I know how you can play and what you can do. Yeah. Um, losing to Clay Davis is never anything, you know. Yeah. Just, it's freaking right. Clay, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know He's a I mean? better player than I am. Right. It's okay. Right. Do you have the ability to beat him and maybe he has yeah. some opportunities? Perhaps. I, I didn't, have, didn't have a chance to actually see it and catch an eye over there. I but, mean, I would probably predict um, that to be a third set. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, you know. Goes Been there the numerous set. times yeah. with the guy. I mean, I have had epic battles with him. I mean, his skill level is higher, the highest now I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, trust me, I I know I can beat him because I have. Right, right. You know, many, many times. I mean, he's definitely got the upper on that as far as he and I go. But at the same time, I know I can do it. Same way I've done it with him. Right. Done it with him the same exact way. So, I know I can get there. It's just that day, Clay played great. Mm -hmm. Now, I did play really solid against Williams. Yeah. I mean, it was – uh, three one three zero, mm-hmm. and um, I, I'm not definitely not going to say I played perfect pool, but once I got comfortable with the speed of the table, like I, I was getting out when I was supposed to get out, yeah. right. doing what I was supposed to do, so I wasn't displeased. So we will get to the match, what you know, where everything went off the rails, and then not as far as the match, just personally. I'll just keep it short and sweet. My mother-in-law was having stroke-like symptoms. Turns out that's not what it was. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but it was not a stroke, but. But it represented the stroke type yeah. symptoms. Mm-hmm. So, long story short, we seriously thought it was happening. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I get a text when I'm down 1 0 in the third set to Rico. He had just missed. And I think I was so rattled from the text, I had no focus on there as I'm sitting here thinking, emergency, emergency. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter because I'm going to probably have to leave right after this game. So, not thinking about anything, miss a shot. He goes up 2 0. Yeah. And I say, hey, listen, I got an emergency. I hate I have to do this. I, I think he was as sad as I was. Yeah, we were having looked, a good yeah, match. Yeah, he didn't He didn't like that that, that no. didn't stop for sure. We were having a great match, and he was definitely in the position to win, to be fair. He really was. But I mean, the news broke when it was 1-0 in the third set, so obviously I had to go do that first. And guess what? I'd do it again if I had to. Right. That's part of life. That's a little bit of the personal side of me. But to get into the match until it had to end, it was a great match. Mm. Now, the first set was ugly. <laughs> but the second set, I went up 2-0. He came back with a vengeance, tied it 2-2. I believe he missed a 7, and I finished and got and took it to a third set. And then, you know, I got down 1-0. You know, I missed a 5 ball. He ended up running out from there. And then once the text came, it was just a done deal. But, I mean, no, I was not dissatisfied about how I played. Obviously dissatisfied about the result and how it had to end, but. You know, there's one every month, and I'll be at every one. Mm -hmm. So, plenty of chances to redeem myself in this in this finish. But no, not displeased about my game. I'm okay uh, with it. I think uh, you doing the right thing and leaving to go help your mother in law. I think maybe, uh, I guess, karma, maybe life, the universe will look after you. Maybe next tournament you uh, kick butt and get like a top four finish. I like it. I I think that's how things are. It can happen. Yeah, I think that's how things are supposed to work when you do the right thing. How about this? It's going to be rewarded. Yeah. Supposed to be rewarded by doing the right thing, so hopefully that happens. I'll be rooting for you. Um, Thanks, bro. Hope I don't play you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right. Both of you. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. I guess we'll hit on my tournament performance really quick. Uh, fifth place, obviously, as we already said. Um, matches went like this. Uh, beat Rico Gonzalez 2-1. to one. Lost to Renal Bot 2-0. to zero. Uh, Beat Pat Dixon 2-1. to one. Big win. Beat John Patera 2-1. to one. Beat Larry Hughes 2-0. to zero. Beat Liam Nguyen 2-0. to zero. Lost to Renal Bot 2-0. to zero. Um Pat, we'll just start with you. What did you think about uh, Justin's run in this Great tournament? Run. Yeah. Great run. I mean, you lost to Renault twice, yeah. right? And how, and in that second one, you definitely had your opportunities. I was actually going to want to get your opinion when you uh, played him the second time on the same table and what you felt like was like your the the thing that you missed out on the most, or what, if it was like focus, because it seemed like you were kind of missing some shots that you normally wouldn't miss. And I also think there was like a period where both of y'all were kind of going back and forth and just slugging stuff. I think uh, I think both of us were just super tired. At that point. <laughs> honestly, honestly, yeah. I think at that point in time we were both just like, man, we need a break. Like, can we just do like a thirty minute timeout and just go like sit down and eat a burger and relax for a minute? Like, <laughs> right. yeah, right. But I mean, the 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 players that you played, um, and I'll even throw myself in there. Um, any any one of us could have given you a tough time at some point, yeah. right? So you definitely didn't go through. Cakewalk to no. to get into the money. You had, you had to play, and you showed up, and you did, and you lost to a guy who 
you said before you have trouble playing against because he is one of your friends yeah. as well. And a 700 know? Fargo. And he's a 700 yeah. freaking Fargo as well. <laughs> yeah. He was playing super, super strong. Um, so, no, man, I think you did a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you Brandon. You can find a way to, you know, maybe start taking a walk around the neighborhood, build up that stamina so when, yeah. when it gets late, late in the evening, drop some LBs. Some energy. <laughs> drop, drop a couple of LBs. <laughs> drop a couple of LBs. A couple linebackers off of you there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just, you know, to your point, you've already said it, a little bit of stamina. You're yeah, tired. for sure. Yeah. You know, you're doing, you're, you're doing a lot. You're running a full-blown tournament and still getting into the money. Yeah. You know, so kudos to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brandon, what did you think about um, the performance? I'm going to give you credit for being a, being a stayer because I maintain what I say when I said I thought you were going to lose to Rico. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I should have. 100% thought, okay, Rico's about to move on and put Justin in the B side, and that's not what happened. And even though you lost the matches with Renault, you played them tough two times. Okay? I believe it was one of them went to a third nope, set. Nope. Oh, they were both two sets. Mm-hmm. Either way, every time I turn around, you look like you were playing them tough. So, like I said, no shame there. Yeah. You I know, mean, the, the rest of your matches, I'm going to favor you in every single one of them. Agreed. I mean, the one with Liam is maybe a little bit of a toss-up in this format, but I'm still going to favor you. And you got right back around to where you needed to be. Um, yeah, I think. Where you deserve to be. Yeah, I think I finished right where we all thought I would, which was fifth, sixth. Um, yeah, Renault, I mean, I had chances to take both to a third set. I think I missed uh, – Seven ball both times to go to a third set in a row. So, yeah, it happens. Uh, we'll get into my match with Larry Hughes because I would like to talk about that a little bit. And it was a stream match. We'll talk about that mm-hmm. here in a minute. But, yeah, I think the other match, it was fun playing Pat. It was fun playing Rico. It's fun playing John Patera every time. It's fun playing Liam every time. I had a lot of fun. I love playing all these people. It was fun playing them. I had fun. Win or lose, I had a smile on my face. Mm. So, now let's move our attention to all the stream matches here. We had 12 matches on the stream. Busy, busy day, mm-hmm. boys. Busy day. Um, we'll just go through round by round. Uh, most rounds we only had one match, so we'll actually just talk about every match kind of for a second. Um, first round, Clint Clark versus Jacob Blake. Uh, Clint wins two to one. Kind of a good way to start off the day, I think. Uh, Clint was definitely favored in this match, but it did go third set, so we got to have a little bit of a fun match to start with. Brandon, what did you think about that first round matchup? I think you were coming. No, Pat was coming. I was Pat. Yeah, Pat, Pat was coming. Pat and oh, Rico yeah, I did. was. Yeah. I was commentating on that one. I remember that. Okay, so we'll start with Pat then. Let's start with Pat. Pat, what do you think about Clint versus uh, Jacob Blake, this first round matchup here? It was to, to what we talked about earlier. Clint wasn't in his stroke at that yeah. point. He was still, I mean, his base level is still a very high level, right? Um, Jacob Blake, being a lesser opponent, um, took it to him, man. They yeah. went to a third set and he was playing really, really well, but it's just Clint punished everything. If Jacob missed, if that defensive shot rolled out, if something leaked out, Clint's punishing. He's mm-hmm. counter-defensing. He's kicking around the table. Very, he kicked around that table very, very well. Um, and then also, I want to say that he, I think he three fouled to win Jacob Blake to win to the win. to win the match as well. Um, so just a testament to how he was uh, uh, playing and already, you know, just bringing in that uh, what do I want to say that cognitive part yeah. of the game, really thinking about not necessarily running out, but oh, I could beat this guy right now with the layout, but three foul. Yeah, and then executing. Yeah, I think it was a fun match to watch. It was a great first round matchup. Uh, Brandon, what did you think about Clinton Jacob? Not surprised it went to a third set. Yeah. Jacob's a good player. Absolutely. You know, he he's not going to shock me if he goes three <laughs> sets with anybody. Yeah. Um, I will say, watching that match and watching how uh, Clint played strong and was mentally strong more than anything, survived the way he did. I knew he was going to have a long day. Oh yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. He, uh, uh, you could sense that, even though it went three sets, it's kind of. Goes back to the point you made earlier about being a stayer, yeah, and how that's what the stayers do is they might have a little bit of a longer match, you know, to get themselves acclimated, and that's exactly what he did. And you know, better player won. Yeah, I'm not sure Clint was sweating that match at all, even though it wasn't the third set. I think that was just one of those. Okay, I can end this probably at any moment. Um, but yeah, great first round matchup, I think, especially for the yeah, stream and for the fans. Uh, second round, we get two matchups here. So we got a little busy second round. We get Monik Surrey beating Todd Nylum two to zero, and then Renal Bot beating Justin Clark two to zero. Uh, Brandon, what do you think about those two matches, man? You got uh, did one of those matches stick out to you? Just you know, what's well, your thoughts? Well, I commentated the entire Monik Surrey Todd Nylum match okay. myself, yeah. so that's the one that definitely stuck out to me. Okay, that helps. What do you think about it? Great match. It yep. was a fun match to commentate. Uh, there was a couple of mistakes that then this is honestly the difference in. Because it was a 3-2, three, 3-2 two, three, two win by Monik. Uh, Monik comes out firing. Todd comes right back. And, you know, 
keeping it interesting, not really making a lot of mistakes. Todd made a mistake by picking up the cue ball, thinking that it was a foul mm-hmm. when Monic absolutely when Monic actually pushed. Mm-hmm. Monic gets the run out from the one ball. It was a great run. I really swung the match. I mean, Monic was already winning. Yeah. But I think this kind of pushed it over the maybe edge. We'll, maybe we'll see that on one of our mistake highlight videos. We've had one of those before. Maybe we'll get another one. So <laughs> get that it was, uh, <laughs> you know, you hate it when you see a match go that way. But no matter, even if that didn't happen, the way Monica was going, I still think he was going to win the match. But Todd, you know, really, really fought, you know, against, you know, a player. I mean, he won a few matches up at the Expo as well. Monica, so, yeah. Yes, he did. In the pro division. Mm, the pro, so. Yeah. There's more to talk about than just, you know, Renal and then BJ. There's Monica that also went. Yeah. But, um, no, that was a great match to call for sure. Good. But, good. I agree. I think uh, both matchups in the second round are very uh, solid matchups. Pat, what would you think about uh, Monica and Todd and Renal and Justin? Didn't see Monica and Todd because I was playing. Didn't have time to watch it because I was good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Renal and Justin, I think I was also playing during the first time you guys were. Probably well. You were probably playing Woody. I think I was playing Woody yep. at that time. So yeah. also, well there you go. Gets, so well, there, there's there's my two cents. On I have that. I have went back and watched both. I think Todd maybe should have beat Monic both sets. Yeah, like I said, he had yeah. his, he had some chances, but he didn't capitalize. Yeah, I will say this. If I, I meant to add this a minute ago, I think watching himself play Monic the way he did fueled him for the rest of the day oh, he for made, sure. because he made his great run. He seemed upset about losing that match. Honestly, I talked to him afterwards. Uh, How he lost it. Yeah, yeah, and then. Um, and then Renal beating Justin, I think, uh, should have probably gone three sets. But Renal, sometimes it takes one roll, and he missed a ball one shot and got a roll, and Justin didn't capitalize on it. So that happens. Uh, third round. Third round, we had some good matches also. Uh, third round, we have Hank Powell losing to Clint Clark two sets to one. And then we had Clay Davis beating Myron Suriman two to zero. Um, both pretty good matches, I feel like. Uh, surprisingly, Myron... Third side, third round winner side. It's pretty strong for him. Mm-hmm. I think maybe you would look at him and he's probably on the bottom half of the players. So for him to win two rounds, maybe this format works. Maybe he's improving. Yeah. That's awesome. Kind of ran into a juggernaut in Clay, though. And then Clinton Hank, fantastic match. Uh, Pat, thoughts on those two matches? Great match. Yeah. Great match. Um, I enjoy watching Myron play because I'll tell you a lot of time I always love seeing new people. Oh, yeah. And, mm-hmm. like, and he hasn't know. played in too many of our events. How many has he played in so far? Mm, I think that was two, maybe three. Two, maybe three? Okay, yeah. okay. But yeah, to your point, just ran into Clay Davis, man. Yeah. Ran into a juggernaut, and hopefully he, he learned something. But uh, he's got a solid game, and I hope he mm-hmm. comes back. I yeah. hope he comes back. And then Hank Powell playing against Clint Clark was, I think, arguably the best match on string. Agreed. Agreed. Arguably the best match on string. I was hoping string. one of y'all would say that. Yeah, I agree. He's, he, I agree. it's stylistically, the way that they both approach the game, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. makes it very, very fun to watch. Because they, they honestly have very similar games, except I would say that Clint is a lot faster. You know? Yeah, he's a much quicker player than Hank is, um, but that tactical battle going back and forth, the defensive shots back and forth, um, and then just watching them run out. Clint was just in a higher gear than everybody that day. You know, if Hank would have been in that same gear that uh, Clint had, I would favor Hank. You know, so really fun match. Really yeah, fun match. I, I agree. I think that would be the best one. If y'all go back and rewatch these matches, that's probably going to be the one that I would recommend first. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hank Powell and Clint Clark third round. Uh, Brandon, what do you think about those two matchups? Pretty much nailed it. I think it was the second best match. However, yep. we'll get more into that further in the matches. Mm. Um, that was a great run by Myron. Yeah, it really was. And you know what? It also shows that people can make runs past the fifty percent line in our tournaments. But like you already, you pretty much covered that perfectly. Mm. Ran to a juggernaut and Clay. He had just housed Pat. He had just housed me, and he was pretty much just ready to get to the hot seat match. Um. No, I loved watching the Clint and the Hank thing. Actually, I mean, they do play similar, but there's definitely some differences. One is the speed of Clint's game and also just knowing he's going to hit that ball well when it goes in. Mm. Uh, He has got one of the most pure and confident strokes. Uh, So does Hank, but I think Hank calculates his stroke a little bit more in the pre-stroke. But um, either way, to to the points that matter – Clint, with his confidence and the way he was pocketing the ball, you know, was able to take it down. But I would love to – I hope these two play each other many more times mm-hmm. this year because we'll make sure it's streamed and sell yeah. the DVDs to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> DVDs. 
No, it's a great matchup between two of the top players in this tournament. <clears throat> um, next round, we have the ninth through, ninth through 12th place match. Uh, Justin Clark beating Larry Hughes 2-0. to zero. Um, Pat was on the stream for this. I think it was Pat and Clay, maybe, or commentated on I it. I think it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pat, what you, do what'd you think, man? Um, for me, I favor you against Larry every time. Uh, although it's it, it is close, I think we were kind of talking about that mm-hmm. off stream before, or maybe it was earlier in the day. Yeah. But um, either way, I favor you in that matchup against Larry every time. I think he may have had some opportunities, but the thing that hurts him a lot is his speed. Maybe there's those shots where he does miss. Um, that defense isn't executed properly. He didn't take that extra stroke, that extra time to really um, um, give that shot its due. And whereas you. You may get down and fire, but it's you do your best and do a much better job of making sure that each shot get, uh, gets uh, the same level of respect. Yeah, um, you punished a lot, a lot in that match, but very fun to watch because I like watching both of y'all play. So it was good to see y'all on screen and you know against each other. Yeah, I think we're a toss up, but uh, he's beaten me before. I've beaten him before. It's a toss up for sure. Uh, I might give myself the edge at Smoking View though, just because I play there more. But mm-hmm. Brandon, what do you think about that? I loved watching y'all's match. Mm-hmm. I actually went back and rewatched that. When both of y'all are on, you're fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it was just more your. I think you really just nailed the point I was going to make. It's more your home pool room, and um, and that's why you end up proving some. You are right about you know some of the shots he didn't take his time on, but I also don't think Larry can play slow. I think he would miss more <laughs> if he played slow. Oh, I'm being sure, serious. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. when you yeah. growing up one way, that's how you play. Um, so with all that being said, nobody's perfect. You took advantage of his mistakes and that's why you moved on. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know if this was the best match I played overall, but I felt the best in this match and it was fun. Like even rewatching it, I was like, man, this is fun to watch. But in the moment, man, it felt so great. Mm. Like, and again, I don't know. I I don't know. I mean, I made some mistakes and I don't know if you would say that this was my best played match. Mm -hmm. Um, if you watch all my matches that day, I don't know if you would say, but just the way I felt, if I could feel that way every match, man, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. And mm-hmm. again, I think it's just playing somebody that's a friend. I mean, Larry's a friend, and playing friends, you know, sometimes you feel good, and sometimes, you know, you don't feel good. But yeah, I felt really good in that match, and that was fun to watch. And um, yeah, he just happened to be the one I was playing at that moment. Yeah. I guess. I mean, if I could have played that way all day, that would have been fantastic. <laughs> so that was definitely a match that I really enjoyed rewatching. Because normally I hate rewatching my matches, but that one was a lot of fun for sure. Uh, next up, we get the final four winner side matches. Obviously, four great players. Um, Clay Davis beating Monik Surrey two to zero, and Clint Clark beating Renal Bot two to zero. Uh, Brandon, were you gone by this point? Yeah. Okay, but, but I, I did. You have rewatch. So, what did you think about the two uh, final four winner side matchups, man? Clay and Monik, and Clint and Renal. Um. Even though I said Clay and Mon- oh yep. the Clay and Monica is the one that I probably watched more. Um, Monica started off hot, you know. Clay was actually giving up a few mistakes that aren't typical Clay mistakes. Monica made him punish the first couple of games, but then, you know, it got to the point where he wasn't capitalizing on Clay's mistakes, and Clay got back to the table a couple of times he shouldn't, and but then Clay ended up finishing the rack. The biggest thing, the biggest swing is when it was 2-2 in the first set and Monik just, for whatever reason, caught more center than right and ended up making the six and scratch it in the corner. Mm-hmm. He raked the first set. <clears throat> really couldn't come back from there. Mm-hmm. Really couldn't come back. Clay got, you know, reborn confidence and just started playing, you know, Clay Davis pool. Um, as, far as, and as far as the other match, right, Clinton, Renault, Renault, Renault. This was one of my favorite matches, this one and also when they met again later. Um, you got to see, the reason I love watching these two play is you have a serious contrast of two different styles. You got one that's fast and powerful and wants to get out and get stronger, and you got the other one that wants to kind of put snooker in the middle of it and play a little bit slower game, and um, Clint was able to come out on top. He um, he just played confident all day. That guy has no fear of anything. No, this, no. He's so much fun. I think both these matches were super fun to watch. Yes. For sure. Pat, what's uh, what's your thoughts? You were commentating both these matches by this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, I remember. You pretty much commentate every match from here on out, I do believe. Yeah, because I lost yeah. already. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So, I mean, what's your thoughts on the final four winner side 
Um, very enjoy. I agree with everything you said about the Clint Clark and uh, Runal match. Um, the notable one for me was Clay and Monica. Uh, Clay and Monica. Yeah. Clay and Monica because mm-hmm. the momentum, to your point, shifted so hard the other way where you really thought Monica was going to beat Clay. Yeah, I, I thought Monica was going to yes. win that match. When I was going to win the tournament. Set. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, so when he was up two two, and I think was it ball in hand that he had. No, and he set up no, on the six? no. He had ball situation. in hand on. He had ball in hand on the five. He had ball in hand That's on the five, was. and then he gave himself kind of a weird angle where he had to get down to the end rail for the seven. He needed some right to stay on the table, and I think he just called dead tangent line mm. center and shot it. Right and it's just went, yes. yeah, and, and to your point, it was that recovery didn't happen. You saw that momentum just do a complete. Well, I mean. You go from having the first set one to raking the balls. Right. In one shot. In one shot. And it was also after that you saw more mistakes just compound. There was a lot of defensive shots that leaked. There was a lot of that, made shots where he snookered himself yeah. a couple of times on a few different balls. That's 50% of it. The other 50% of it was the reborn confidence that you give Clay Davis yeah. of all people. Yeah. Right. You, gave him you a don't, I mean, if you, if you got the guy killed, you got to, mm. you got to kill him. Yeah. He's not going to kill he himself. Blood. If you hand him a chance, he's going to make you pay. Right. And that's exactly how that match went. Absolutely. So yeah, it was definitely a, that was a crazy match. I feel like it's fun to watch. Yeah. And then Clinton Ronaldo was like two heavyweights battling, but not really playing their, their best. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but it was still a fun match, I feel like. And also, it really makes you think that their Masters team might be the best one in Charlotte. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry to you. y'all's team. Sorry to y'all's team. But we're the second best. My feelings ain't hurt on that. We're the, se- okay. we're the second yeah, I'll, best. I'll take second. I'll take second best of that. <laughs> All right, so next up, we get the fifth, sixth place match, a rematch from a couple of rounds ago. Ronald Bott went in 2 0 against Justin Clark. Um, let's just start with Pat again because you were commentating. What's uh, What What did you think about our second matchup there in the because I got some thoughts on this tournament. I felt like I started off really strong and had chances, and it just – it was kind of like Monica against Clay. I gave Ronald a chance, he took advantage, and then I kept making mistakes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I really feel like it was more so Justin beating Justin, and Ronald just happened to be the guy that got to win the match. I would say it would be a combination of both. I yeah. think it was definitely a lot about you you beating yourself, um, the mistakes that you made, but then also him him being in his stroke at that time. Yeah. And doing what he was supposed to do to punish and win and take those racks. More so you on yourself, for sure. Um, but that was, to your point, you talked about it earlier, exhaustion at the end towards yeah, the end of the day. A little bit tired, that stamina kind of weighing yeah. now. And, and you're playing him for, what, this was the second time this that you played him at this, this point? Time, yeah. So maybe that also in the back of your mind as well. Do you feel like... Do you feel like you put a little bit more pressure on yourself because of those things, or do you feel like you kind of went in it with the same attitude that you've had all day? No, there's definitely pressure. I think uh, just playing somebody as good as Renal and playing somebody that's as good at ball making as Renal. As I kept missing balls, it said to myself, "Okay, if you keep missing, he's going to get out. If you keep missing, he's going to get out." Mm-hmm. And then what happens when you think about missing? You miss. Right. Yes. So then it just becomes, "Okay, well, you know, probably losing this match." <laughs> um, but Renal just plays so good, you just know if you give him a shot, he's out. Right. So. It does add a little bit of pressure to every single shot that you take because a player like him, there's other players that play great, and some of them are in the money in this tournament, that they might not get out if you miss, but they're going to play a great safe. Mm-hmm. But that's mm-hmm. way different than somebody getting out. Mm-hmm. Ronaldo is going to get out. If you leave him a shot, he's getting out. So it's like that little bit of pressure. So when you miss two or three times, it's like, oh, boy. Yeah. And that gets in your head, and that's exactly what happened. I mean – Renal, without knowing it, does put that pressure on somebody. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Brandon, what'd you think? I mean, you pretty much nailed everything. Now, this doesn't really apply to this match because of the mistakes you admittedly make. Um, he is so good at putting himself in a position to win. Yeah. You know, when he played BJ Usry in the 10 ball tournament, that's pretty much exactly what he did. He put himself in a position to win by playing great saves and not playing hero pool. And especially once you feed off, and know that your opponent, yeah, <laughs> knowing that your opponent, <laughs> knowing that your opponent is gonna, you know, he knows that he's already beat you once, and he's feeling hungry, and he wants to beat you again. Yeah, you know that's also part of it. So, but no, I mean, like I said, you just ran into you know top three player of the day. Yeah, you ran. I ran into a player that I couldn't make mistakes against. Exactly and I made right. Mistakes, mm-hmm. and then I mean, he does what he does. I mean. 
you turn the ball over against Michael Jordan, he's going to do a rock the cradle dunk at the end. I mean, it, you know, it's what you. they do. Yeah. Um, you know, you give the ball to the Warriors, Steph Curry's hitting a 49-foot three-pointer. Um, yeah. Next up, we're going to get into the uh, to the Clint Clark run of things, as I like to call it, because now he's going to play three straight matches on the stream. <laughs> um, first of all, the hot seat match. He loses the hot seat match. Clay Davis beats Clint 2-0. to zero. To me, that's a shocker. How does that not go three sets? Big time. It's a shocker. Also, the way Clint was playing at that point, I thought maybe Clint was playing better. I maybe would have given the nod to Clint heading into that match, but it tells you how good Clay plays, mm -hmm. and Clay really honestly played really good in that match. 100% played really good. Uh, Brandon, what did you think about the hot seat that was That was the best I've seen Clay play, period, all day long. And actually, that was his best match of the day. You know, and I would say that was probably better than the last two tournaments he's played. As far as the quality that he is playing, that match alone, he beat that man to death. <laughs> he was on a mission. He wants, and that's Clay every single time. He's on a mission and he wants to win. But he knew it in that match. And anytime Clint made a mistake, Clay made him pay. And Clay breaking run, getting out, it was beautiful. Just played great. Yeah, he played like a ninety-eight percent. Yes, he perfection did. Perfection match. Uh, Pat, what do you think? If that Clay was that Clay for the rest of these matches, he. Yeah. He wins the whole thing. And during this match, when it first started, we were so excited to call it because we really it was a toss up for us. Yeah. The way that Clint was playing all day, mm -hmm. the way that Clay was playing all day, firsthand, right? Seeing yes. the, the the path of path destruction, of destruction. That the guy was on, right? It was a toss up, and we were just happy. When I saw that Clint Clark lost 0 2, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, solidified. Clint's gonna win this yeah. thing, just like I called it, right? Uh for him to come back, which I know we're gonna talk about, it was like they swapped. The clay that showed up in this match was not the same clay that, that was there in the finals. He yeah. made a whole mess of mistakes compared to damn near a perfect match. Yeah, this was Clint. yeah. If clay plays. I've seen. Yeah, I mean, if he, <laughs> if he if he or anybody can play that good every match, it's he's an eight hundred Fargo yeah. if he plays that way every match. Yeah, for sure. Um, instead of a six ninety Fargo, or that's whatever. still a great um, Fargo, but yeah, but no, nah, Clay played perfect in that match. Uh, maybe Clay wanted to just prove that he could beat Clint and maybe it kind of drained him a little bit. You never know. But move on to the third-place match. Clint Clark, Renal Bott. Um, Clint beats Renal two sets to one. And I think, once again, two heavyweights battling each other. A toss-up. Clint somehow pulls it out again, beating Renal twice in one tournament. That says something because Renal plays really good. Um, maybe Clint – I think Clint was on a mission to get back to Clint. I think Renal gave it his best shot, just couldn't quite mm -hmm. get there. Um, Pat, what did you think about these two in the second matchup between them? Huge testament that Clint Clark beat him twice. Yeah. That's crazy. Yes. Um, also brings up the point that we keep talking about where towards the end, it seems that Renal seems to always find a way to fizzle out. Yeah. And I don't want to say always find a way to fizzle out, but it just seems like he always fizzles out towards the end. It does not surprise me one bit that that match is it, that it goes to three sets. I think that it's, oh, it's supposed to go that yeah. way because it's so close and such a toss-up, especially with how both of those guys were playing all day. It was like, choose your path of destruction. You want Clay, you want Clint, you want Renal. <laughs> Pick one because it's going to be the same thing, right? Yeah. Um, but super fun match. Uh, but to your point, I think Clint was ready to prove that, hey, this is supposed to be my tournament. I've been playing great all day. Yeah. I lost that focus in the last match, or maybe just play the guy at his highest gear, and I want to prove and stay consistent and, and take this trophy. No, for sure, yeah. I mean, I think in that situation, I'll probably give the edge to Clinton in that match mm. just because of where they're playing at and the circumstance that Clinton just lost. Normally, I think it's a complete toss-up, but I think in this situation, Clinton probably was slightly favored, I think, going into this match. Um, Brandon, what did you think? This was my favorite match mm, of the yeah. day. You know, y'all yeah. had the Hank one, uh, the one earlier. This yeah. was my Hank number Clint, one. Yeah. The, the okay, so my it was my favorite because one, the ball pocketing was great by both players, but number two, just watching how many swings this match had. I mean, it went from one momentum to the oh, other, yeah. back and forth, back and forth, until Clint had, was able to edge him at the end. But it was just a great match all around to watch. You know. Renault just made the one mistake at the end, and Clint, you know, finds his way out of the rack and wins it. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing else really to be said. But it was definitely my favorite match of the day, for Ab sure. Absolutely, and it's a great uh, semifinal matchup. Um, 
now we move to the finals. The finals was a race to four, best two out of three sets. As you know, we were playing races to three. Um, Clint Clark, Clay Davis. This time, Clint wins two sets to zero. Um, I mean, uh, two heavyweights. I mean, probably the two best players in the tournament, possibly. Naturally, it comes down to him. Clint gets his rematch. Clint wins. I mean, I don't really. Pat, what did you think, man? I don't know what to say other than the Clint that showed up in that match yeah. was the best player in the field today. To me. Yeah, that. To me. I think even better than Clay's performance when he beat Clay. I think this is a, a, a stronger performance, most likely that. What, what, and what I might agree, I might agree with that. I might agree with that. This might have been the best played match. Yeah. yeah. And I'm actually going to piggyback right off of that and go straight back to that point. Because of what happened in the hot seat, mm-hmm. I feel like that yeah. calls oh, for sure, this yeah. to happen. Um, number one, because <clears throat> when you play that well in that match beforehand, and then you sit for how many hours? Right. Waiting for the next match. You get cold. You get not necessarily tired, but sometimes mentally up here. Oh, sure. And you can have an emotional letdown. And Clint's the type of player, when he smells blood in the water, it's a done deal. Oh, yeah. And Clay made a couple of pivotal mistakes in the first three racks of the first thir- of the first set. And it just carried Clint through. He took advantage. He got out of the mistakes every time. And his confidence just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they got down to the final ball that was just conceded. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, and, I, and that's not saying that Clay's not an emotionally strong and mentally strong player. I'm saying that can happen to anybody after you play almost a 1,000% pull, 980 pull, and then have to sit and then wait against another great player who wants revenge on you. It's a perfect storm. It's like trying to beat a good team two and three times. It's hard. Yeah, exactly. I think it's. Uh, I think you give the slight edge again to Clinton this match just mm-hmm. because Clay beat him earlier. I mean, it's yeah. Well, it's how he to, beat him? Do that too, but it's, yeah, it's hard to beat the same guy twice in any tournament, which proves just how crazy it is that Clinton beat Renault twice, and the fact that Renault beat me twice. Mm-hmm. I think it's also um, and that's why they're two of the better players in this tournament, probably top three almost every time they play. Um, but, yeah, that's the end of our tournament. That was all the matches. Uh, congrats to Clint for winning, for getting the trophy, uh, the third third event of the year, the third points event. Um, I guess I'll read off our uh, sponsors one more time here for this event. Thank you again so much for helping us run this tournament. Um, Deadstroke Media, John Patera at REMAX Metro Realty, Inkwell Design, Paul Harrison Custom Hughes, Portico Licensed General Contractors, Pool Doctors, Reds Debris Removal and Hauling, and Classic Home Billiards. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring that event. Now let's move towards the future. Our Ooh. next event, May 18th, it's going to be Nine Ball at Blue Rocks. We're back at Blue Rocks for the first so, time this year. Love um, it, love it. Yes, absolutely. It's a long wait. we got a while between tournaments this time. That happens, but it'll be points event number four. Mm-hmm. Um, Brandon, what are you, are you really looking forward to? This I tournament? am so excited. Yeah. It is my time to finally make some noise. I've got, I have knocked on the door too many times. I love this establishment. I love their tables. I love calling matches there. I think it, because of the nice Predator lights that they have, yeah. it makes the stream look Man. so much yes. better. You know, I just, I love everything about it. I just wish it was a little bigger, but you know what? Yeah. Perfect. It's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Pat, what, what are you thinking? Are you excited? Exactly. Yes. It's yeah. one of my favorite places to stream right now because mm-hmm. of the lighting, the equipment. Yes. It just feels nice to be to be in there. Um, and then the, the, what was I going to say? The tables. Some of my favorite tables to play, play on. Great. After playing on Smoke and Fuse, Smoke and yeah. Fuse my number one. But <laughs> but I love going to Blue Rocks. Love the staff. Love the environment. You know, I agree with Brandon. I wish they had 12 tables. That yes. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm excited. I can't wait to play there. Absolutely. And they're yeah. right around the corner, too. So that helps. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm glad Craig is going to let us come back there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the point standings here. Have y'all looked at the points? We've yes. had, yeah. We've had 59 different players play so far. Oh, which, I know. Which is uh, I'm still on the yeah. first page. Yeah. I'm still on the first page, so I'm happy. Hey, but there you go, brother. It's crazy that we had 59. Did y'all think that we would have 59 after three events? Yes. No. You thought we did. Yes. You, I did not think we would have 59 after three. No. Events. After three, I thought 59 would probably be close to where we would finish the year. Mm. The fact that we're there already tells me that people enjoy the pool series. Absolutely. Um, for whatever reason. So thank you all so much for playing. We really appreciate that. Um, keep coming out. Keep supporting. Yes. I'm just going to go ahead and read like the top five or six people. You should then. do the top 32. 
You, you want me to read all 32? Because, all right. because the top 32, they're going to go to the, the invitational right. event at the end of yes, the year. this is true. And that's what we're shooting for. Yes. Shoot which, for the top 32. The, the invitation will be 2,500 added um, after 10 events. So you still got time. Still got seven mm-hmm. events left. So, all right. So the top 32, are you ready? In order. In order. Sorry. All right. Uh, Clay Davis, Mike Davis Jr., Clint Clark, Renal Bott, David Anderson, Rico Gonzalez, Hank Powell, Justin Clark, Larry Hughes, Todd Milam, Javier Oliu, Brandon Mullis, Brian Francis. I'm going to pause right there because that's the end of page one. Okay. Any surprises? Any people that we thought might be a little higher on that list? Do we think Clay is the front runner to win right now? Yes. Yes. I really would have to look research into that question, but right now, yes, yes, and yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think that's a pretty strong list of players right there, honestly. And it's also people that have played in a few tournaments. Uh, it's awesome that we have three different winners so far. Uh, Ronal, David Anderson are knocking on the door. Rico being up so high is amazing. Yes. Shows you that this format works. Um, it also shows you that playing in all these tournaments – can help it's you. It's a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it show up. Because the top three, you remember, get paid at the end of the 10 events also. So more, uh, you know, gives you more of a reason to come to come and play to try mm-hmm. to get top three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat, what do you think about that first page? First page, I think, is super accurate. Mm-hmm. If I had yeah. to pick my one person, I'm like, oh, well, that's pretty cool that he's in there. I might have to go with Javier. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, because he hasn't had any high finishes, but he's been yeah. consistently winning a few matches. There you mm-hmm. go. Yes, there which... And Todd up there only playing in two events, but getting seventh, eighth both times. And right. Larry Hughes also only playing two events and getting up there both times. Same with Hank Powell. <clears throat> same with Justin Clark. So it told you, you don't have to play every event. Mm-hmm. But Clay play, Davis. Clay Davis only played two events. Mike Davis, Clint, Clint Clark only played one. Um, actually, I feel like the only person on this first page, only two of these people, I think, have played all, all of them. Three. Only three of these people have played all of them. You have uh, Rico, Gonz- Rico Gonzalez has played all three. Uh, Todd, no. Rico Gonzalez, Javier Oliu has played all three, and Brandon Mullins have played all three. Mm. Those are the only three people who play all three. Uh, so, yeah, I think playing all three has kind of solidified them in the top 15, 20, or top 11, or whatever. Top 14. Keep top pushing. 13, there you go. Long so, year. Yeah, now let's go on to page two. I'm on to page two now. Are this you ready? Is, this is like 14 through 26. Yes, tied for 14th to tied for 23rd. We have uh, B.J. Ussery, mm-hmm. Jeff Abernathy, Jeff Pate, Monik Surrey, Chris Brower, Eddie Little, Alan Prophet, Jacob Blake, Chris Clark, Liam Nguyen, Myron Suriman, Brian Krizel, Carlos White. There's a lot of great players on yes. the second page. <laughs> the second page is almost as strong as the first page. It makes you think that some of those guys might be making a move if they play in a couple more events and can get up there and all of a sudden contend for a top three spot. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, surprise, is there a surprise that you think, I mean, Brandon, what do you think out of those players? Is there a surprise, somebody that sticks out to you, whether too low or too high? I'm going to say, too, like, they, okay, like they should be higher. Or lower, it doesn't matter. Just somebody on that page that are just red where you're like, wow, like, what are they doing on page two? Jeff Pate. Jeff Pate, you think he should be higher? Yes. Yes. For sure. Well, he's only played two events. There's plenty of players that have only played two events. Yeah, True. <laughs> true. <laughs> And I still think he's going to get to the first page. Yeah. yeah. You know, assuming he plays in at least 90, 80% of the events. Yes. So, for sure, definitely paid. I, Pat, what about you, Aiden? What's your thoughts on that second page there? Anything sticking out? I think the only reason why you don't uh, have, like, six of these names on that first page <laughs> is because of the amount of events that they have mm-hmm. not played. Yes. Maybe one, maybe two events so far. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I predict that these, these first couple pages – we really, I don't think we're going to really start seeing that separation until about the sixth event. Agree. About the yeah. fifth or sixth event, then Agreed. we're really going to see that separation if the names start to stick around a lot longer in these spots, and it's going to be a little bit more impactful when we see that sixth. Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. I would say Eddie Little being so low yep. after right. playing two events, just because at the beginning of the year, he was my pick to win the fourth. You eliminated me. I'm That's right. Yeah. Wow. You did eliminate him. I love it. Eddie, I'm kidding. He's not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see y'all play again. <laughs> we're, we're Hank. Pat hung the banner at his house. He hung the banner. I beat Eddie Little. He hung the banner. I'll sleep right under. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the final uh, couple of people in the top 32. Uh, we yeah. have Pat Dixon. One. Lisa Three, Cassette. Nine, two. Rico Carcamo. Three. John Patera. Mackie Lowry. Jesse Draper. They're tied. 
There you go. Because we are tied. So yeah. as of right now, we have <clears throat> 34. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, those six right there, that's uh, not a bad list either. Jesse only mm-hmm. playing one event. Mackie only playing one event. They might drop down if they don't come and play more. Um, Pat, I mean, I expect you to be a little higher, honestly. So, yeah. Same. Yeah. Um, yeah we can, he'll get there. We, we can end the bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah. kidding. Yeah, no, same. Um, I think I did miss an event. I missed yes. the first smoking cue yep. event. Yeah, the ten ball. Yeah, the ten ball. Yep. Um, my draw was very tough this time. Yep. And then the first one, the, the, I think the first event of the year was probably my best chance to really yeah, make yeah, some noise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I had a good run that time. So yeah. maybe, and you know what? Maybe honestly, maybe I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Maybe I'm right where I'm supposed to be. But I look forward to attending the rest of these playing tournaments, and then when we start to see this information, see where I'm at. I'm confident in uh, in, in staying in the top 32 in points. Yeah, I think with you possibly playing, let's just say you have only missed one more event. Yeah, you'll probably definitely finish top 32. Yeah, for sure. Um, Brandon, what do you think about those final six players? I mean, it's a strong list of players. Yeah, I mean, I think those final um, six are pretty good players too. And you know, well, this top 32 would be a great tournament right now if it could happen right now. Absolutely, I'll tell you what. absolutely. It actually be 34 um, because we'd have a tie there. So. Oh. We need. Hopefully, there's no time. Play in games. Yeah, just like the turn. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. One game. One rack. Yeah, yeah. One, one rack. rack. Yeah. Ten ball. Let's see <laughs> yeah. who wins. Um, now I'm excited to see where the points go. You look at the top ten; they're all within 200 points, which is just one win. You get 200 points. So anybody that top ten wins, they kind of we could see a big movement. Yeah. I mean, Todd's in tenth. If Todd wins, all of a sudden he might be second or third, mm-hmm. uh, depending on how happen. the next tournament goes. Same with Larry Hughes. If he comes back and wins the next one, same with me also or Hank Powell. So it's interesting to see if one of those guys can snap off a win and really shake things up at the top of the order. But then you go down to the middle, you know, somebody like Jeff Pate, Eddie Little, Chris Brower, Brandon Mullis gets a win. All of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, now they're possibly outside of that top five Mm -hmm. making a move. And then you go back down to where you're at, Pat. I think, you know, one of those six players getting a win, it's like, okay, well, they're in the top ten. They got no worries now about being top 32. Right. And you make another one or two good runs. You might have a chance to make some money at the end of the year in the top three. And like I said, the top 32 will be a fun tournament for sure. Yeah, for sure. yeah it will. Yes, absolutely. And uh, that's enough of the points talk. Let's talk about one more thing before we end the show. And that's our big tournament coming up in June, June 22nd, 23rd. 30th anniversary of Smoke and Q. It's going to be a $3,000 added event. It's not a points event. So we're opening up those 64 players. It's going to be a pretty stacked field, guys. We have a bunch of people signed up already. People such as BJ Ussery, Mike Davis. Tommy Kennedy, Shannon Fitch, mm. um, Gregorio Sanchez. Llama. Uh, yeah. So, plus your locals, Clay Davis, Renal Bott, Eddie Little. It's going to be a fun event. Pat, what's your, going to be your thoughts on that? Are you stoked for this 30th anniversary? Oh, man, I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. Can't right. wait to stream it. Can't wait to see all the players out there. Can't wait to get it started, man. That's going to be our best one yet. Yes, I agree. It's going to be a lot of fun. Just celebrating 30 years with Smoke and Q. I think they're going to have t-shirts made, too. Oh. To... Uh, celebrate, and uh, we'll probably have a little bigger trophy made for that moment as well. Uh, Brandon, what are you thinking, man? It's been 30 years. Have you been there all, you said earlier, 22 years? Not maybe? quite, yes. So, no, I have not been there all 30 years of smoking yeah. Cube, but most of it. I mean, I've been there, um, I, I was thinking, I've been going there for about 14 years. So Okay. I'm about half the years I've spent. So, I remember when they did the 20th anniversary 10 years ago. I remember playing. It was, uh, I remember who I played. I lost to Scott Lewis mm. and uh I think I lost to Scott Lewis and um, uh, Stevie Moore for my two losses. <laughs> so, very tough draw. Tough, yeah, very much so. Yeah, so I'm excited 10 years later to see how I do in the 30th anniversary. Um, I mean, we're all three playing? Yes. Yeah. We're all three playing. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we definitely look forward to that. We appreciate Matt Riggs letting us run the tournament, letting us stream the tournament. Uh, you know, he didn't have to do that. He could have just done it all himself. Mm-hmm. But he trusts us. He likes us. And he knows that a lot of people follow us, and a lot of people will like to play at our events. Type of tournament where you might need two stream tables. I mean, possibly. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Uh, we we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, it will be a two-day event, though. So, mm-hmm. yes. Um, top 16 will make the money out of 64. Hopefully, all three of us are there. Yep. Hopefully, all three of us are playing on Sunday. Uh, I think that concludes this episode of the TPS Reports. Pat Dixon, do you got anything else to add? Stay down on your shots. <laughs> okay. Think about where the cue ball is going to go after you make that shot. There more, you on, more on Pat's tips next time. I like it. Brandon Mullis, <laughs> do you got anything else to add before we close out this episode? Just thank everybody who watches and supports this. That means more to, than you know. I mean, like I said, like I was telling them, 
you know, the amount of support and love we get from the bar, the bar staff, from the people who watch on the stream or from the people who are there means everything to hear it. So just keep, just keep bringing those compliments. Absolutely. And as for me, Justin Clark, I just got to say, follow the TPS reports on YouTube, follow the TPS reports on uh, Spotify. Make sure you look up the pool series on Facebook. Make sure you look up the pool series on uh, YouTube as well. And uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Can't wait to May 18th. It's going to be a long ways away. I'm going to be itching. Uh, and thank you all for watching or for listening. And uh, until next time, we'll check you later. Peace out.